No. Yes, very good, okay. Um, I hear myself. You can hear me too. I can hear myself too. I can hear myself. Well, it's yes, no, I can still hear myself. I'll just turn this one off. Okay, so uh, many thanks for coming back. This is only the, the hardliners now, right? This is the core, uh, core people. But also welcome back our online participants. It's always a challenge to be as punctual on a hybrid meeting as uh, in a, uh, uh, a virtual, fully virtual meeting. So thank you for the understanding. People are quite tired here uh, and exhausted and there's been a lack of oxygen even. Mm. But I think there have been some efforts made to cool down. When we were preparing this event, the question was, do we need an icebreaker question? But I think icebreaking is not really needed with these temperatures. And we have been really warmed and well together. So let's make a deal. Yeah, uh, I think we need... You, you, you guys are very good in deal making, right? So let's make a deal uh, that we kindly, concisely push through the program. But we try to finish really, really, really by 6 o'clock, right? I mean, we know initially the program would last until 6.30. But uh, by that time, you know, I mean, even Sigrid would be, would be <laughs> at the table. So if you have a good hour, yeah, a good hour, then the proposal is uh, that we do three things, yeah? One is we're going to listen a little bit more to the other two pillars from Matteo and the comparison with the Met, the deep dive. Then we'll have a conversation with our distinguished panelists and with you as audience on the question of community building. How on earth to involve so many stakeholders in this super big venture? So that is quite uh, uh, something to talk about for a bit. And then, of course, you know, we can't wait already now for hearing the conclusions from our distinguished coordinator, Rafael Ali uh, 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 shortly before 6 o'clock. That's the proposal. Uh, yeah. Then, okay, I think we go. Uh, Matteo, before uh, we give you the floor on the pillars, right? I think it's worth mentioning that why actually you combined one and four and two and three. And what I understand is that the previous pillars, one and four, are really about, uh, and we talk a lot about it these days, science-based policy making. So it's really putting in place the evidence and the science base for better policy. And the pillars that you will present now, right, two and three, are really about uh, industry uh, and about the economy, right, the sustainable blue economy itself. That's correct? You're nodding? It's okay, good. I would say off you go. Timer starting now. <laughs> right. Okay, yes, you're right. Uh, it's about economy, but it also, it's also about climate neutrality and climate resilience. Uh, the second pillar... Um, can, I, can I please have the slides? Okay, I will start. Uh, the second pillar, um, blue economy solutions towards climate neutrality. So blue economy can and will and must provide solutions also towards climate neutrality. We need to have this by 2050 and earlier if possible. Um, so. Clearly, this is, this is interacting with the economic structures, with, with our economic plans for today and for the future. Now, the third pillar, if I can get the slides. Yes. Uh, the third pillar is a thriving blue economy, as uh, Jan Martin was, uh, was mentioning. Thriving blue economy for the people. We said at the beginning, this is the productivity pillar. What does it mean to have a, a thriving blue economy? We are thinking about better li livelihoods, we are thinking about high-value jobs, but high-value jobs with are um, equitable, where uh, welfare and wellness are distributed as, and accessible. Clearly for this, and we connect also for, to the fourth pillar, uh, we need uh, governance systems and participatory approaches. We need ocean literacy because we need uh, um, well-educated people that understand what is the value of ecosystems, what is the value of these economies, what they provide us. The vision of the partnership and the ZRIA doesn't relate only to coastal communities, it relates, it relates to society as a whole, right? So uh, when you think about equitable ways, resilient societies, we think about 
the possibility through innovations to access sustainable feed, food and feed, bioactive compounds, uh, recreational opportunities, and so on. Uh, in the Mediterranean, we know that tourism is highly important and we need uh, resilient coastal communities in face of uh, the changes we are going to see uh, in the coming years and the coming decades. We need to, to get prepared for that. Now, uh, once again, uh, as we were uh, highlighting before, I would like to begin from the first uh, partnerships BEP, uh, Sustainable Blue Economy Partnership Objective, underpinning innovation to upscale renewable ocean energy. We know that uh, for climate neutrality, one of the first sectors that comes into mind is uh, obviously energy production. And uh, what the blue economy can do is uh, deploying these technologies in a basin that is starting to see the opportunities linked to uh, think about uh, offshore wind, especially with uh, platforms due to the depths of our sea, uh, that it's going to see also the deployment of uh, wave or localized tidal, depending on the areas. But this comes, uh, and, and you know, the, uh, the level, with the levelized cost of energy going down, this is going to be increasingly productive, not only from the energetic point of view, but also from the economic one. And, uh, and it's going to be fostering employment opportunities. But together with that, and this relates to the first uh, MED uh, economy objective, uh, with this, the increased um, use of ocean space is going to also to be linked to possible conflicts. Because the space is limited, the activities are there, shipping lanes might be closed or might be overlapping at times with these uh, uh, structures. So we need to be able to manage through knowledge, through proper governance, through effective maritime spatial planning, which is again uniting the two areas uh, with, uh, with a sense of priority there. Um, the second point uh, from the partnership area, developing sustainable and cost-efficient solutions for construction. Okay, I will go light on this. It refers straight to multi-use and offshore platforms. Yes, it's also an intervention area or part of it. Um, but the the, area, the partnership area goes uh, um, expands this domain when it sees all infrastructures and structures from uh, fixed ones. Think about ports, marinas platforms which will be multi-use, are going to be, are being multi-use, uh, from the lens of uh, uh, full life cycle management approach. Uh, we need to be able to um, uh, enhance smart design to provide a full life uh, cycle assessment until the decommissioning phases. This goes also for uh, the moving structures as ships, as recreational boating, once again relevant in the Mediterranean, and, uh, and the use of novel materials, of automation, increasing safety, uh, safety at sea, but also safety for workers. So, uh, and this is one of the other matching points. To uh, end with Pillar 2, one other example, clearly there can be many more, uh, quantifying the impacts of climate change. We need resilient uh, ecosystems on one side, we need resilient coastal communities and economies if we want to have a really sustainable blue economy and facing the changes that are upcoming. Um, forecasting system, innovation in observing technologies. Now I'm connecting again to pillar one, but just to let you understand that everything is connected with everything in this domain, okay? So let's go straight to pillar three now, um, which is somewhere. Okay, yes, pillar three, thriving blue economy for the people. Now, here we are representing uh, other opportunities, bioeconomy, um, biotechnologies. We know that the challenges Europe-wide, but in the Mediterranean also in a specific way, are associated to environmental sustainability on one side. Uh, but there are also big opportunities coming from the diversification of these sectors. And, uh, and um, if we think about uh, value chains mentioned in the first objective, also here, thinking about the, the whole value chains, we are able to enable um, traceability, um, certification, we are able to uh, reduce waste by optimizing the usage 
of the food products and, um, uh, and think about biorefining or the extraction of bioactive compounds that can be used in several ways for human health and beyond. So uh, this is also part of the intervention areas which is the green transition to the, to food, to the blue food production. Sorry if I don't remember exactly the name. And, um, and they are innovating also the second, the second objective there, innovating low trophic, multi trophic, low carbon, here we connect to the previous pillar, low carbon ways of producing a blue food. The third and last objective shown here is, uh, is for, the for the reduction of human health associated risks from pathogen, toxins, toxicants. This is uh, uh, linked to, the, to, to another intervention area, uh, healthy food uh, production from healthy, uh, for, for the, in the framework of One Health approach. Uh, this has become even more important with the pandemic. And, uh, but it's also linked to completely different things like the importance, this is mentioned in the ZRIA, the importance of having uh, systems that um, uh, can inform us, uh, for example, uh, about uh, incoming harmful algal blooms. Imagine how this can be important not only uh, towards the resilience and safety of coastal communities, but also with regard to, to, to the tourism sector, as in the Mediterranean, once again, but not only, clearly. Now, uh, the last point here, which is, uh, um, uh, which is showing, first of all, which, which are the uh, commonalities, the major commonalities between the two SRIAs, the attention to platforms and multi and co-use on one side. Partnership SRIA uh, has uh, um, a stronger accent on blue carbon sequestration that can be fostering a discussion also in the Mediterranean basin, where still everything, you know, it's not that it's absent on the other side, but there are accents, different accents due to the nature of both SRIAs. And the uh, third one, uh, once again, uh, the partnership is raising, um, is raising attention towards minimization of risks from novel maritime technologies. Once again, offshore platforms. Do we know what the impacts are in the very Mediterranean basin about offshore installations? Actually, we don't, because this technology is new. We know in other basins what is happening after they've been installed, and let's remember that in the Mediterranean, these, uh, the, offshore, um, the offshore wind farms are still uh, mainly in planning and demonstration phases, uh, sorry, in permitting phases. Uh, so we need to foresee and to study zo those, uh, uh, those uh, uh, fields as the benefits from blue spaces to human health, or uh, by biodiscovery to improve well-being. On the other side, clearly the Mediterranean Sea, and I conclude, Mr. Moderator, uh, maritime cultural heritage is particularly felt in the Mediterranean. It's present in the partnership ZRIA, embedded in, in other instruments, uh, like ocean governance and maritime spatial planning, and the promotion of blue biotech, especially uh, at the end of the uh, blue bio uh, biotech era, bioeconomy era net. Um, so uh, from, uh, from my side, uh, that's all. I thank you for, uh, for your attention and uh, looking forward for your questions. Thank you. A warm applause. Yes. Uh, so quite a few, again, uh, similarities, uh, points uh, where the partnership can support the existing priorities of uh, the Blue Med 3 yeah, which is good news, right? It's good news. And but also some areas where indeed, you know, there is, for instance, medicine culture heritage. Interesting to see. That I'm sure there's a good reason for it. And Blue Biotech, uh, also interesting to see. Okay, etc. Uh, any comments from the panel? Do you recognize yourself in the analysis or would you like to emphasize particular aspects from the presentation? Uh, um, Catherine. Thank you, uh, Jan. Uh, first of all, I think I'd like to thank uh, Matteo for having done a super job, uh, keeping in mind that the proposal for the partnership is under negotiation. Mm -hmm. So he has not seen the intervention areas. He doesn't really know what is uh, there. So yeah. he's. Uh, I think he's based a lot on it, on when we've been speaking together and we sh sort of... Uh, 
our face talks and he understands, no, that's not in their intervention area. It's, it's really at that level. You've done a fantastic job. Now, I would say, of course, on that basis also, that um, uh, some of the areas which we have not taken into account are, as we say, precisely because yeah. there are other activities ongoing. Yeah. Particularly when it comes to the maritime industries, we have the suit partnership. We didn't really know what they were doing, and as uh, both uh, uh, Maris and Abraham have pointed out, we need to avoid duplicating efforts. But uh, my colleague uh, will be able uh, to explain how these floating structures, the intervention area two and so on, is capturing a lot of the generic activities. And I think maybe that is one thing we need to undermine, or underline, sorry. That's the fact that we're not the sum of the sectors in the blue economy. So we're do not doing a lot of sector-specific things. We're looking at areas where we can generate critical mass over and above the sectors in order to uh, be able to, to advance such as technologies and so on, yeah. which uh, you are uh, leading. No. Okay. So I think a great yeah. analysis. I recognize it, but I think we can stand strong in why there are discrepancies. Before giving the floor to the, the audience, Benjamin, I see you watching. I think you want to say something. Is yeah, I, right? I just wanted to add, uh, first of all, I can only second what Katrina just said. I mean, perfect job. Um, but... Uh, my point that why I gave you a signal, um, we, we can see from the analysis of the Blue Met initiative and the SRIA and the Blue Economy Partnership uh, that there are actually a lot of synergies. Yeah. And now we are sitting here uh, back to back uh, to the mission workshop mm -hmm. and we heard about this in the morning. And uh, there are the, 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 the lighthouse for the North uh, sea and the Baltic Sea actually tackles a couple of these um, multi-use offshore platforms. There is a lot of uh, research going into this direction and uh, we can see the complementarity with the partnership mm -hmm. and the Blue Met. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of synergy between mm -hmm. the mission and the partnership and mm -hmm. this has to be highlighted to, uh, to the audience that uh, we only work or we can work very, very nicely together in synergy and in harmony mm -hmm. with all the uh, different players and instruments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was Okay, thanks. Uh, Maries, I can give you a floor, but can I also pose you an additional question? Because uh, I think what we've been hearing so far is still relatively abstract, right? So we... I mean, the partnership is not even, let's say, formally proved. So, there's a lot of, let's say, terminology. And I can imagine that a lot of people here now, or those who will be interested in the partnership in the future, will be very interested in concrete opportunities. And before I give you the floor, I wrote down one priority, which is, we talk about it, you mentioned it now, Benjamin, also. Developing sustainable and cost-efficient solutions for construction, maintenance, reuse, and multi-use of offshore platforms. I don't know, Maurice, whether you wanted to talk about it, but could you, I mean, I say, in normal words, what that could imply in terms of real projects? But please. Okay, thank you. The first part, uh, I want to complete uh, Benjamin and uh, arguing that we, are, we want to develop synergy in the mission and take the example of Digital Twin. Digital Twin, it's a huge challenge. And uh, what we plan in the Sustainable Blue Economy Partnership is to have some case studies in the lighthouse in the Mediterranean. Yeah. It means that the same place, the same uh, in Adriatic or, uh, or in, in Rhone estuary, and we, when this lighthouse will be notified by, by the mission, uh, what can we do? In complementarity with uh, some other services like Copernicus, for mm -hmm. example. And uh, mainly working on ecosystem functioning, ecosystem modeling, and uh, we are thinking to, 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 do, to do that in complementarity. Coming to the offshore platform, what we like to do is to have a 
innovations in, in technology, for example, about floating, uh, wind farms, and also multi-use, coupling with solar. You know, in Belgium, they are trying to develop that. And, uh, and also environmental friendly. It means by minimizing the impact, you see, as well on the bottom and as well on the interaction of the, with, with the fisheries. It, it, it's a complex issue, and we want not only to develop a uh, wind farm, we want also to uh, analyze all the uh, impact, including uh, underwater noise, including birds, including all the, all the, yeah. all the aspects. Complex and also very costly, right? Because I can imagine if you really want to make a major investment in a multi-use multi offshore platform that, you know, you may need to tap into several funding streams that one single st funding stream may not be sufficient. So there I think also, back to synergies, right, uh, Abram? I mean, how do you see that? Yeah, I just wanted to jump uh, right before uh, giving the, the floor to Benjamin because I wanted also to thank Matteo for the analysis. And actually, I like very much when, when I see these connections and, and, and the, the conclusions uh, and the opportunities that he was highlighting. I was wondering that I would like, I would love to have a completely a new reader that confronts both Srias without telling him or her this is the one for Bloomed and this is the one for the partnership, whether they would feel those mm. small differences, of course all the synergies, but also this small Mediterranean flavor you can mm. see when you read about uh, maritime cultural heritage. It's only normal that in the Mediterranean we, uh, we express that more boldly than, than maybe in the, in the partnership and you, you can see those small differences. So, but as uh, we were saying, I think there are many, many, many synergies. Um, about the question of the multi-use uh, offshore platforms, I remember one example in our long discussions online that Benjamin was like making the case uh, uh, about one example of what could be this multi-use. Uh, and I think it's, it, it's, uh, it's very inspiring to hear how, how many different activities you can have on, on a single uh, platform. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I think uh, Benjamin and then Mark Magrette on the same question. Then we come to a Lithuanian. Uh, um, straight to it, I'm giving example, and, and you, yeah. young, uh, you just mentioned, the, uh, you used the word costly. Yeah. Um, and if I envision a, um, a multi-use array between a fish farm, mm -hmm. uh, where in the plume water there are some blue mussels grown that take up the nutrients from the water in combination with some solar uh, panels that are supporting uh, the electricity for the whole system, then you are actually having a sustainable or more sustainable system because uh, right. you reduce the cost for yeah. operating by producing the energy uh, on site. Absolutely. And that is a very, very good example from... Uh, how that can be a sustainable solution for the future because you are combining mitigating environmental effects like the, uh, the nutrient effluent from the, wind, from the, from the fish farm uh, by producing food that is potentially healthy uh, and producing energy at the same time and uh, taking that energy production out of the terrestrial systems. So definitely it's, 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 it's an example to just kind of show the audience yeah, where we go. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not only the cost, it's also the incomes and the revenue streams and Correct. in the current context, right, that we'll talk about. Yeah. To the demonstration, <laughs> in a way, we, no. there is the impact network also exactly yeah. for this, to, yeah. to follow the scale yeah. up of the uh, Okay, of Great, fantastic, thank you. Uh, just uh, one yeah. general comment I, yeah. that I believe is very important. I also want to thank Matteo for his analysis. Uh, and remind one thing, so, um, we have been analyzing um, very specific and thematic objectives. Yeah. We shouldn't forget uh, about uh, cross-cutting cross mm -hmm. and enablers. Uh, from, um, in Blue Med they were more cross called cross-cutting. The partnership mm -hmm. are enabled because it's really there where yeah. you can uh, uh, implement this connectivity. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, I'm always <laughs> repeating and repeating myself yeah. uh, when mentioning the capacity building I mean, in the Mediterranean, but it's not the only uh, the only aspect. So perhaps a refinement in this direction could uh, uh, really complete the uh, the landscape. Sure taken, yes. Okay. Before we close the session, uh, our Baltic friend, please. Yes. Yes, as a professional uh, person asking questions today, uh, I would like to um, our speaker raise two questions. First one is about uh, this climate change issue. So we, we know that uh, the biggest um, carbon footprint in the maritime uh, is uh, maritime transportation. Yeah. So the ships using oil, the huge amount of, of carbon. Pre so what are the solutions uh, instead of going back to 19th century with the wind? Yes. And uh, another one, could you elaborate more about what is behind uh, the term uh, blue biotechnology? What, what uh, we, uh, we could talk about Mm, so, what it could be. Okay. Thank you. Matteo, if you can take the first one, and I think there may be others who want to take the second one. Is okay. Right? I will the take the first one. one. I, I will take the in your, in It's your, for me. In your domain, right? Yeah, of course. The fast solution for uh, for reducing carbon footprint from uh, shipping is, uh, is fusion power. I'm <laughs> not joking. <laughs> not joking. It's uh, fusion. No, no, no. It's just a joke. I'm joking. It's a, it's, a, it's a transition, it's ongoing. The first step is clearly LNG. Still, it's a fossil fuel based, uh, uh, but it's, it's no news. I mean, in this context, uh, the partnership has a role, the waterborne partnership mm -hmm. has a specific role on this one. Yes. So the synergies will be uh, enabled even there, depending on, uh, on, uh, on the, okay, they are two different kind of partnerships first. Uh, but maybe you can go better into detail of this uh, uh, rather me and then uh, than me and then uh, um, the transition is uh, we will have to see this is still in development uh, shipping uh, needs to needs to uh, to progress from there it's moving more than the 90% of the of the goods that we use every day and the raw materials that we, that are are used to for those ones it's moving people uh, for now the progress okay let's go back to the mediterranean uh, and uh, and the, uh, the 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 journey towards the establishment of uh, an emission controlled area in in these seas. So the steps are are there now. How fast? How effective to limit the effects of climate change? Well, acceleration is needed. So step by step, we have some of the solutions: uh, reduction of emission from regulatory processes, from international agreements from experimenting new fuels for a possible uh, for for integration of batteries also within uh, the ship. well that's that's part of it it's not there is no single solution so okay. yeah yeah okay I mean, we, we can talk for hours on this yeah, okay okay you, right? we will talk about <laughs> it later <laughs> very quickly because we're trying to round off the session Ed, because we want to have another session right but very quickly i think on the water blue biotech that is going around in it is also we can spend a couple of hours on that but i don't know uh, Benjamin or what was more about the emission of transport yeah, please. Um, if in an ideal world uh, we would uh, remove uh, the, the carbon emissions of fossil fuels yeah. um, in the shipping industry yeah. and uh, if we do that we are um, we're actually removing a lot of the vessels yeah. uh, because uh, don't quote me on the number on the exact number but uh, I uh, learned recently that uh, a quarter of, of the of the Ships, containers, etc., that are um, on the water right now, they are transporting fossil fuels <laughs> or uh, coal and oil and, and gas from, from yes. A to B. Yeah. And if we decarbonize our whole uh, economies worldwide, and we, we are taking a quarter of the ships out of the water, which reduces the noise and the etc., and the pollution, yeah. you name it. So, therefore, uh, there is a lot of scope uh, to, to remove. Use and our emissions. And the current yeah. geopolitical crisis doesn't particularly help, right? Uh, that is another story. Okay, thanks for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we, we park the blown biotech. We take that later on. Yes? 
Yeah, it's about it on the blue biotech. Uh, blue biotech. <laughs> uh, it is the way it has been dealt with, as also, you know, in the OECD report where they were doing the blue biotech, it is organisms from the ocean which you model and produce on land which can have a number of potentials. So it is in the traditional way. But And we have been in the partnership not dealing with freshwater um, organisms, it's marine organisms. Yeah. So, so it's a, a very traditional way of looking at it. Could I offer one comment to uh, the offshore platform. Yeah. The sky is the opportunity. All industries can see and research their opportunities. It's a virtual platform, so to speak, where you can, uh, for instance, look at possibilities for developing new sensors for specificities. It's a platform where you can think about supply ships, so bringing the maritime transport in. So that's one comment. When it comes to what's the solution for the energy, I'm a very pragmatic person. I'm not a scientist. I say, I have a problem, solve it. Mm -hmm. So this is typically what I would ask the researchers to come up with a solution. It's like when the commission says man to the moon, uh, you don't know how you get the man to the moon. This is why we have research. That's why we have technology. That's why we have all of the clever brains. That's why Europe is relying on a knowledge economy. Mm -hmm. So we know what we want. The researchers tell us how to give it. Thank you very and there much. is some smart one out there. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I think uh, we can. Uh, well, let's all thank Matteo because you know we are very happy with that. Applause for you, uh, Matteo. You are dismissed, but the panel has still you know some work to be done. And at, I think we want to spend some time right on a little discussion on uh, community building and mobilization because if we heard uh, something, then we heard that this is a huge enterprise, a huge venture, and it requires an enormous amount of people to be mobilized, right? And just a few thoughts that occurred when we were, you know, speaking yesterday with some of you, that there, there seems to have been a good amount of community building in the sea basins, you know, for whatever, 10 years or longer, and the Mediterranean in particular, and community building, you know, often goes together with meeting and getting to understand people, sometimes with dining or with winding or with human encounters, right? Uh, by the way, that has not been very easy to do so the last two years, right? I think, you know, this is one of the first events, you know, which is uh, and at least in part in person. So it's very special to be back to this type of thing. So I think when we talk about community building, there's also this aspect of trust and uh, getting to know, etc. So the big question that I think we have is for the panelists and the coordinators of the partnership is how are you going to mobilize so many stakeholders? This is just the top of the iceberg today, right? With, with the people that we have here and 50 or so people online with a partnership not even approved. And that will become, of course, a much bigger wave. So very interesting to hear from you how, I mean, which type of stakeholders you think are important to be mobilized, and a few may be here in the room, and how on earth to do that, and hopefully, you know, we don't need to go back to lockdowns for that. Uh, so who <laughs> would like to, to say a few words about uh, mobilization stakeholders, uh, Maurice? I think that what we can offer is that when we will have uh, wrote the uh, content uh, of the call, to present it in at the sea basin level through a web conference and where we can have uh, answer try, try to mobilize uh, a lot of applicants and try to answer to the questions about what we are expecting and also not only for the uh, academic uh, scientists but also with the industry representatives and try to invite them to mm -hmm. this uh, different uh, conference that we can organize. And on, on, on that mm -hmm. one, um, we, talk, we heard a lot about the openness of the partnership, the, the, uh, the invitation to also associated countries. We have representatives here from non-European countries online and in the room here. So when you say uh, by sea base, and I assume that that is also inclusive, right? It, it will also means reaching out to our friends across the shore here, right? Yeah, uh, it, it means that when the call will be uh, between the funders which are inside the Sustainable Blue Economy Partnership, 
when the call will be prepared, we will also contact all the uh, other partners, which are, for example, in Prima, uh, mm. all the Maghreb countries, uh, including mm. Egypt and, uh, mm. and Lebanon. It means that, and asking them if they want to join their effort with us, you see, mm -hmm. and, and okay. co-found their, their own uh, partners. So the sea basins remain very important yeah. also once the, the partnership is in place. Abraham, how do you see that from your work in the Blue Mint, right? Yeah, yeah, just, just to build on, on, on Maurice's message. Uh, during the, the work that we've been uh, doing in the last years uh, in Blue Med, um, so dissemination, dissemination, and dissemination, that's crucial. Uh, people have to know about the calls. Uh, the different stakeholders need to have time enough to engage in proposals, prepare proposals, organize brokerage events. We need to contact, of course, some stakeholders. The scientific community is generally always ready and, and very attentive to get these opportunities, but other stakeholders that we would like also to be involved uh, maybe are not so used to identify on time these calls and find the right uh, um, the right consortiums to, to, to build on. So I think that is crucial. And I'm, I can only talk about the, the, about the BlueMet community or the BlueMet ne network that has been built over the last year in the Mediterranean. Yeah. As Rafaele was saying, the, the regional uh, basins are crucial. We have an entire uh, network of people that have been involved in BlueMet in each country. We have been working with national people representatives of uh, all the countries that have been attending uh, the work of BlueMed. We have from representatives at the political level, at the GSO, at the group of senior officials in BlueMed, uh, to, the, to the platform coordinators, to the national people. So these, all these people can help in disseminating and getting to know, getting uh, the information passed to the to the local and regional actors, absolutely. Okay, very good. Uh, I think Rafael would like to go but I'll give, I'm going to give you the microphones. We need a microphone here. And whilst the microphone comes to you, I have actually a question for the audience. Uh, what would you like the partnership to do in order to reach out to you? So what is very concretely the type of initiative? So it would be very good to have you think about that question. Whilst I think, yes, please come down to Rafael Liberali to also give some thoughts. But it will be very useful to have your feedback you. to the partnerships on no. what can be done. Please. Thank you. Uh, just to say that, uh, as has been said, the uh, neighborhood policy, collaboration policy, is crucial for this partnership. Mm. I mean, uh, ocean and the seas do not stop <laughs> at the border. Uh, they are a common good, and we have in the Mediterranean as in other parts. Uh, we have just uh, had a chat before for the uh, for the um, the Black Sea uh, is crucial. Of course, now we have built a partnership uh, following the 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 the, the, uh, the instruction, let's say, the rules between uh, member states and associated states. Mm. We have, but it's clear that the strategy is to develop ways <coughs> to collaborate, which will be exactly the, the ways we will discuss mm -hmm. internally and with our partners. Mm -hmm. But there is, just to be clear, if I remember correctly, a specific work package mm -hmm. uh, in the coordination part yeah. that will look to the international cooperation and to the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Uh, policy. So it's it's a priority for us, mm. and we will yeah. bid in the soon as soon as yeah. possible. Because I mean, I'm just whilst I'm listening, I'm thinking through how many stakeholders and partners does one need. We heard, you know, how many countries are in the Mediterranean? Forty-one, right? Forty. No, this is the union. For okay, the union. Okay. Countries. Okay, good. Okay, so how many countries do we have in the Mediterranean? Uh, 17. 17. 17. Right, so 17. And we have member states, we have industry, we have research, we have regions. We heard, you know, a call to include regions. So we have possibly hundreds of actors, right? Uh, 
how do we how do you do that? I mean, we heard to this morning uh, there are young ambassadors, perhaps there are other ambassadors. So anything you can say about, and also are are you going to do this online? We are in the digital world very much. The program is promoting that. Or are you still think about you know live events? I mean, a lot of questions not for now, but just thoughts to be aware of this huge challenge ahead of uh, the partnership. I, uh, we are fully aware about that. <laughs> And what is important, and one of the points we had in the past, and we are, and now is under solution with the Commission, is exactly this one. Hmm. These kind of activities are not research program, research project, or something like that. Is a new animal, but a crucial one, a fantastic one, where there are a lot of interactions. And is a new uh, adventure we have, yeah. and we have to build together on that. Yeah. In the same time, you know that in the, the, the in the, the, the lighthouse we have seen this morning, of course there are CSA to support the action to coordinate, and of course this CSA will include our uh, partners, our neighbor partners. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a construction mm -hmm. that we will construct in the next years. Yeah, it takes time also. It takes time, it takes uh, ideas, it takes uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a process. Yeah, very much. Yeah. A partnership is a program, a really integrated program between member state and commission. And there is a, a, a building process that is crucial, yeah. and we are and we are between the first partnership that uh, started. So we are experiencing with the Commission solving the problem and uh, finding new ways. But the future is there. So there is a laboratory uh, yeah. component. Thank you very much. Yes, Magrita. Sorry, uh. ah. <laughs> but Rafael, we can build it on uh, Prima. Because Prima is a partnership around the Mediterranean, including yeah. all the Mediterranean countries except Libya, Syria, mm -hmm. and uh, and we have problem with Palestine. Yeah. Okay, and you you all understand why. But it's working quite well, mm -hmm. and it's on the domain of freshwater, uh, including management of freshwater. It's including agriculture mm -hmm. and food system. And it's uh, it's working well since four years. So there's something to to, yes. to build on. Yes. I mean, colleagues can really mention a lot of different instruments and ways. But on a more general level, maybe this was not that that clear at the beginning of this uh, event. The partnership is supposed to run not only call for research and innovation project. Mm. The partnership is supposed to implement other typologies of yeah. activities. These additional activities will be crucial for the process Raffaele yeah. yeah. was yeah. mentioning. So in a, in a way, we can be creative. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I have one question, yes, Kathleen? But at the same time, I would like to raise a flag of precaution because everyone cannot be connected and involved in everything. No. We will generate the biggest bureaucracy in Europe. So we need to be prudent and think who has any, for instance, on the development of the digital twin mm -hmm. with high mathematical models and artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. As a citizen, I wouldn't want to be involved in the establishment of this very high tech knowledge. There's no point in engaging the mm -hmm. citizens in this. Yeah. And that's why, I, why we're saying at every stage of our interventions, we need to identify who is going to produce this? Who is going to use it? Yeah. Uh, and that is the principle right. we need to follow. If not, mm -hmm. when we are dealing with yeah. complex systems yeah. like this, yeah. you can develop the most bureaucratic yeah. systems yeah. ever where you lose people's time, yeah. which is not good economy for the union. And very practical question. And, and sorry, and I forgot yeah. a very important thing. We had this discussion with the, concerning the Sulul, amongst others, and impact. Maurice yeah. and I had long discussions, how do we do that? And I said, we can, in Brussels, not add value to the regional dimension of the 
of every region in Europe. The member states need to take a responsibility of engaging and the table, as Raphael was saying earlier today, it's a table on a systemic change where we can exchange practices across the sea basins, but also on the governance table with the mission. How can we learn from each other, like the one of the mission lady from Ifremer was saying? So, so uh, this is also an element which is important of the, the strategic process. I think um, uh, Sigi mentioned it earlier today also that it's about European research area uh, making it efficient. What can we learn from each other? Mm -hmm. Everyone has something to bring Absolutely. to the table. Yeah. And very practically, uh, as it is late and people are tired and maybe, you know, there may be thoughts coming up like, oh, that would be a great idea, you know, for the partnership. How, how, how can people reach out to you? Is that a functional mailbox? People just, you know, contact you personally. Uh, very good. Torsten, okay, very good. Torsten, mail at, <laughs> we'll have your, okay. Don't leave then any question, uh, go to Torsten. It's very good uh, to have you there. Good. And Tustin is still smiling, so that's good. Okay, good. I've one question before I think we wrap up, right? I mean, and stop me, Ed, because I get really enthused at this late day. But we have been sitting together all day, right? And we started with a, a very important workshop about the mission. Now that we are at the end of the day, do you see new relations and synergies or possibilities for cooperation between the mission and the partnership that perhaps you didn't see? at the beginning of the day. Um. Since I'm the starter, is, and then we have, uh, uh, the thing I have seen is that I'm actually very glad now that we dig the uh, intervention areas which are very targeted because that's what the mission is supposed to do, which makes it easier for us to look for areas for cooperation. I didn't think about it that way, but it's the digital, it's the offshore and so on. I think that will make it feasible. As on a systemic change, it's clear the Commission is doing a massive job on mobilization, which we can also generate synergies towards. Mm -hmm. So that's my two take-home messages between the two. Okay, thank you, fantastic. From a Baltic perspective, how do you see that? Thank you. Yeah, I'm uh, a new person in this area. A year ago, I just said that you will be responsible for blue economy in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea what is all this stuff about. Uh, it was totally mystery. And uh, after today, I, it became a bit clearer what is going on. And uh, Horizon for me was also a mystery. You know? There is a one fund uh, that is giving money for research and something like that, but I have no idea how it works. So now I, I have better vision of how it works, but it's still incomplete. I, don't, I need more details on that. Good. So it's uh, really, really useful events, at, at least for newcomers like me. Possibly the person who are working for the program for 10 years, it's like, oh, again, again, the same words, 25th time. Uh, so I hope to continue that. And, and um, you know, one thing is important uh, that I should say from the perspective how we use this European Union funds, uh, for instance, in Lithuania, in, in the area of fisheries. Uh, the trick is that uh, you need to be flexible. You know, I can give you a specific example that we still have six million, not billion, six million euros from the peer previous fisheries fund that will end on the 31st of December this year, mm. not utilized yet. So still we spent six over six years to, to distribute those money and haven't come, succeeded to get 100%. Mm. Uh, the four, I think, uh, especially in the research area, we should be as flexible as it possible. So uh, we should should change the rules during the show, the, the yeah. game, because uh, you know it's uh, when uh, in 2022 we don't know what we will know in 2028, and possibly we will totally different priorities and goals and so on. Yeah. So I hope uh, that uh, our member state also will try in our Baltic region to do something you do here in the Mediterranean mm -hmm. and uh, co 
cooperation between Mediterranean, Baltic, and Black Sea, Danube, and so on. Uh, will the main way to success? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I think, uh, welcome to the Maritime community. Welcome, I and mean, uh, thank you for traveling all the way to Marseille. By the way. Good. At, I think I've come at, to, at the end of, you think so too, uh, yeah, I think we're done, right? So we give a big applause to our panelists, yeah? Thank you so much. And good luck with all the work with just you come, right? Very good. Um, so let's move to the closing panel. I will ask Rafael Liberale to join the table so that we can close with some, well, some uh, speaking points for the future, some highlighting to be taken home. Um, just just a, a logistic um, information. Uh, we were informed that really after we finish here, we will have the drinks and uh, the dinner just immediately so that there's no time gap. <laughs> yeah, people, some people need to leave early. So, a very Nordic dinner. A Nordic That's dinner. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's a move on. for the south, a dinner for the north. <laughs> Raffaele, I do have a question to... Well, I don't think you need help for, for bringing some conclusions, but I do have a, a question for chill out, not warm up, for chill out for you. So, in many blue economies domains, Europe is a world leader and each of the 25 participating countries have their unique strengths and features. How does the partnership take these strengths and variety into account? That's the question I'll leave you for your conclusions. I mean, first, I'm very tired, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I will say stupid things, but it's a question of. Uh, this question is crucial. I mean, the answer is the partnership. The, 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 the real idea behind the partnership is that is to build on the strong activities that the 25 has, working together and having the critical mass, exchanging experience, a partnership, I don't know, if, I think somebody said, is not a matter of uh, coal uh, research granting. If for that, okay, Interesting, nothing more. Is to build a community. Is to build really the, 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 well, what is called the real partnership. I mean, work together between member states, between uh, sea basins, uh, different stakeholders. Give the input and try to find what is common. And what I was saying this morning. The discussion we have with the Commission about the in-kind uh, in con in contribution is crucial. Why? Because we know that in our partnership, let's say around 50% will be in cash. So we will do coal, we will grant research, but that are in line with the priorities. That are in line with the priorities of the partnership and the priority of the partnership are the result of a discussion between member states and stakeholders. So there we will try to fund new technologies, new, 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 new platform, how better to exploit the platform, we have discussed before, how better to preserve the biodiversity of the, of the ocean, how, how, how. Thus will be how to fund the research and technologies. But in the same time, the other half will be in kind contribution. That means activities that are activities in the member state, the partners, both member state, regional. You know that we have as partners regional authorities. Are partners of the that is significant. And we have to build on that common activities. 
We have to, to, to bring what I was saying this morning. Activities, programs that are national. Let's, let's speak in terms of, uh, of skill development. PhD. PhD uh, activities in different member states in this field. If you look, there are in several member states PhD or doctoral courses in this field. If we are able to coordinate at partnership level these activities and having a common share of the results, I mean, we have we have made a major step, and that to the partnership will not cost a lot, because that are things that are funded at national level anyhow. We just give the, the extra layer that give the European added value, that give the, the, the common, and that is the results. So we have to look, and that will be the discussion. I told the, 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 the cellule in Brussels, why? Exactly because we have to coordinate, to take stock, to build on this, to have the discussion and to propose. At the end of the day, that will be approved by the, the General Assembly where you will have the partners inside. Will be proposed by the Executive Board, but at the end of the day, things are in the end of the General Assembly. And that is the, 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 the real uh, main activities, and that is the, the main different, difference between uh, uh, just a, a, a big research program, uh, research activities, and a partnership, a real partnership. It's difficult. It's not easy. We, are, uh, we have to build, I was saying for uh, neighboring uh, countries, how to do based on past experience. Are they OK or we have to? We will discuss. We will find our ways. But I mean, this partnership, really, I feel, I feel strongly and I fight for them. Also, to simplify the procedure. Because I, I really feel that these instruments are something that can uh, construct the European research area in different fields. And that is the answer. The research area, build on that, coordinate, and, but in the freedom. I mean, nobody is obliged. At the end of the day, I work now, uh, I represent Italy in a way. Of course, not everything that will be done in the partnership is a priority also for Italy. We will fund nationally something. Of course, because there is a freedom, there is a, there is, but the bulk, where you have enough common interest, you do that together at the European level. And you complement that with national activities that can be either for your specific priorities, and you can have at national level specific authorities, uh, priorities, or to construct the national system that will participate better to the partnership. That is uh, what I feel my, my, my vision about this partnership. And I think that is crucial. That is really the future of construction of Europe. I don't know, but uh, I am really passionate about that, as you can see. <laughs> Thank you. Those are wise words, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Ed? Shall we wrap well, up? I think it's the best conclusion we could yeah, take. So we should yeah. just thank everybody, right? Yes. Well, yes. I'm, Two things that we really need to make. Would you like just to? one word to you and to the person that are listening to us? And please tell to your friend and colleague. 
help us in building the better partnership possible. Mm -hmm. It's just this a message. We need you. You have to help us. And talk to Thorsten. Eh? And talk to Thorsten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. But you see, that is crucial. Please help us in constructing. Give us ideas, give us input. That is crucial. Very good. Great. Thank you, Thank you. So just to thank you, uh, those that have been remotely following us, which were quite a few, thank you very much for following till the end. And uh, another two thanking words for mm -hmm. the people that, that made possible this, yeah. this uh, workshop. And this is for, for Wendy Bone mm -hmm. and Michaela Gigli, yes. policy offers from the European Commission that made possible the preparation of the workshop, but also in terms of communication to Claudia Pecorato, also from yes. the Commission, <laughs> and, our, and our contractor, the VO Communication, that made it possible for the two sessions. Thank you very much. Have a rest, a good rest of, uh, of the evening. Bye-bye. Very good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Pleasure, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs>